Hello and welcome to Rocking Horse Talk with me David Kiss. Today we have an FH Ayres horse and it's a D quality version. Ayres made rocking horses for at least 60 odd years and over that period of time um, they, they changed their design somewhat. Early horses um, were typically of one design and um, we talked about a, a movable head horse a while ago and most horses were that shape, they, they were very low um, running on their stands and then I think about 1910 or so um, they introduced uh, a, a wider variety of horses. So Ayers um, adopted this system of grading their horses and denoting different quality horses with different letters so we and they ran from A to E. An A quality horse was the, um, the most basic of horses. Um, B quality horses um, were a bit more upmarket. A C quality horse was a skin covered version of, a, of an A quality horse. A D quality horse is the one we are talking about today so that's a much more upmarket horse generally and the E quality horse was a skin covered version of a D quality horse. They were all referred to even in their 1938 catalogue as hobby horses. Aside that they also made the standard rocking horse which we would now refer to as a bow rocker. So by 1939 which was only a year before they, they stopped running their business um, they, they offered the best part of 60 different varieties of rocking horse which to me um, is a bit uh, a bit extreme and may, or maybe that, that was part of their downfall I'm, I'm not sure but, but anyway it certainly means that there's plenty of horses out there that uh, for us to look at in future videos so basically a D quality horse was a, a very upmarket horse and as we can see this horse um, it's, it's over and above a, a standard horse. I've got a standard horse behind me that I'll, I'll bring into the picture in a moment for a comparison. Um, it's much more muscled all round the horse. The detail of carving is much more, there's much more work going on with the stand. So it's, it's a much higher quality horse than, than the A quality. So I've got here um, a 1938-39 catalogue for Ayres and this was almost right at the end of their production um, and inside it we've got a good illustration of, um, of the D quality horse and I'm just going to read a bit of it. Um, it says special workmanship and plated fittings throughout. Each horse is fitted with an exact reproduction of a miniature in miniature of a full-size hunting saddle both bridle and saddle being removable. So that's why this horse hasn't got any, any harness on it at the moment. Um, this horse has come in for restoration so it's a little bit knocked about but again it's a really really good example of, of what the factory produced because it's not had any work done to it at all. Um, I'm just going to bring the other A quality horse into the, into the shot so we can compare the two horses together. So we've, both, we've got both the horses now in, in the same shot. Um, they're both in essence the same size. The, the, the D quality horse is up on, on the stand at the moment. But they're both size sixes. Um, I think the D quality horse was made a bit later. I think this was made maybe in the mid twenties, um, and, and I think the the A quality horse is is a little bit earlier. But anyway, we, you can see just by looking at the two in comparison, um, lots of different details. The A quality horse is quite plain, um, whereas the the D quality has got much more carving. Um, if we start at the head. The head of the, the D quality horse has got a, a twist to one side and it's also looking to one side so it's got a double, um, double twist in the head um, and the detail in the head carving is much more pronounced. The horse also has a tongue, it also has the teeth carved into it, much more carving in, in the legs and generally just more, more shaping around the body. A quick comparison to the to the A quality horse. It's although it's a, a very pretty little uh, pretty horse. Um, it is quite plain. Um, hardly any carving to the legs um, or to the neck or that much detail in the head. But I suppose to a young rider it makes no difference. I think it was the discerning adult that made the choice of buying the more upmarket horse um, with the D quality horse. 
I'm not quite sure when the uh, when that D horse was in introduced or these A B C D E horses were introduced. But I think, as I said, around 1910 something like that. Um, the horse we have here, as I said, was you know quite quite late. Um, I'm not quite sure when the um, when the the numbering system was introduced. Um, perhaps around 1910. Um, I have come across a, an Airs D type. Uh, a D quality horse that has a number stamped into its forehead. Um, these numbers were quite often found in earlier horses, so from about 1880, certainly up to about 1900 and perhaps a bit later. A um, bit difficult to know exactly. Um, the numbers I, I'm sure were, were stamped in by individual carvers to denote how many horses they carved um, and they were, were, were paid pro rata. So it wasn't just the horse that came in for much more um, detailed work, it was the stands as well. Um, one of the striking things is the fact of the, the construction of the base of the stand. Um, and it's made out of this really thick timber. And the, the joints are they're what are called halving joints. So half of one piece is taken away and half of the other piece is taken away, so they're joined together. Um, it looks looks uh, like a, a very sturdy and strong way to make the stand. It does have one slight drawback in as much as that, that if the floor is not flat or the bottom of the stand warps, the whole thing can rock about a bit if it slightly distorts, as opposed to a standard type of stand that sort of just sits on the ends of it. So that would be um, possibly a more secure stand. So in their wisdom, they, <laughs> I don't think they quite thought that one through particularly. Um, but anyway, it does make it look really um, quite strong and chunky. Um, the posts also had um, had more detail on them um, at the bottom, so a much, much um, more defined turning. And the runners as well were, were cut out to this shape. As you can see, it's wider in the middle than at the ends, which gives it really rather a good look. Um, if we have a quick look at the, uh, the A um, model horse again, the A quality horse, um, the runners on that are dead plain. So all of these things go to make up the difference in, in the two different quality horses. The, the D quality has all this extra work as opposed to the A quality horse which was quite plain. Over and above that the horse also had all its metal work nickel plated. Um, we can see here um, it still has its nickel plating on, um, and also another difference is the the um, swinging irons were held in with split pins, as opposed to on the uh, A quality horse where the, the ends of the swinging irons were pinged over. Um, if the metalwork was all plated, the last thing they wanted to do was go hammering it, so they've made it um, with a split pin um, type fitting, which is actually a much better thing because it's much more serviceable. Um, it's very difficult to do any work to a, a horse with this pinged over fitting. So that was, that was quite an advantage with that. We have the remnants of the original um, harness off this horse. So um, we have part of the original saddle which was they described as a, a replica of a, a hunting saddle. Um, and it's made on a wooden tree inside. So, but it's lost a lot of the saddle flaps um, and it would have been fitted to the horse with a girth strap. Um, the nickel plating also um, carried on through the stirrup irons, they were also nickel plated, as was the bit. So when it was new everything would have matched really well. So I think that's about it for now. Um, you're very welcome to uh, like and uh, subscribe to the channel and uh, hopefully I'll be back before too much longer with uh, a new horse for us to look at.